Deuteronomy chapter 29. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the Israelites in the land of Moab, besides the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. Moses called to all Israel and said to them, You have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh, to all his servants and all his land. The great trials which your eyes saw, the signs and those great wonders. Yet the Lord has not given you a heart to understand, and eyes to see, and ears to hear, to this day. I have led you forty years in the wilderness. Your clothes have not worn out upon you, and your sandals have not worn off your feet. You have not eaten bread, nor have you drunk wine or strong drink that you might recognise and know your dependence on him who is saying, I am the Lord your God. And when you came to this place, Sihon, king of Heshbon, and Og, king of Bashan, came out against us to battle, but we defeated them. We took their land and gave it as an inheritance to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of the Manassites. Therefore, Keep the words of this covenant and do them, that you may deal wisely and prosper in all that you do. All of you stand today before the Lord your God, your heads, your tribes, your elders, and your officers, even all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and the stranger and sojourner in your camp, from the hewer of your wood to the drawer of your water that you may enter into the covenant of the Lord your God and into his oath, which he makes with you today, that he may establish you this day as a people for himself and that he may be to you a God, as he said to you and as he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. It is not with you only that I make this sworn covenant, but with future Israelites who do not stand here with us today before the Lord our God, as well as with those who are here with us this day. You know how we lived in the land of Egypt and how we came through the midst of the nations you crossed. And you have seen their abominations and their idols of wood and stone, of silver and gold, which were among them. Beware lest there should be among you a man or woman or family or tribe whose mind and heart turns away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations, lest there should be among you a poisonous root that bears gall and wormwood, and lest when he hears the words of this curse and oath, he flatters and congratulates himself in his mind and heart, saying, I shall have peace and safety, though I walk in the stubbornness of my mind and heart bringing down a hurricane of destruction and sweep away the watered land with the dry. The Lord will not pardon him, but then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy will smoke against that man and all the curses that are written in this book shall settle on him. The Lord will blot out his name from under the heavens and the Lord will single him out for ruin and destruction from all the tribes of Israel, according to all the curses of the covenant that are written in this book of the law. So that the next generation, your children, who rise up after you, and the foreigner who shall come from a distant land, shall say when they see the plagues of this land and the diseases with which the Lord has made it sick. The whole land is brimstone and salt and a burned waste, not sown nor bearing anything, where no grass can take root, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah with Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and wrath. Even all the nations shall say, Why has the Lord done thus to this land? What does the heat of this great anger mean? Then men shall say, Because they forsook the covenant of the Lord, the God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. For they went and served other gods and worshipped them, gods they knew not and that he had not given to them.
Thank you uh, for reading that so well. Um, it was a, another long one, I apologise, but yeah, we want to dig into this. Uh, so we're in Deuteronomy 29, and, and part of Deuteronomy 29 is, is going back to the fact that God makes covenants with his people. Uh, Abraham was the first one we talked about, Abraham had, had a covenant, um, and, and now we're talking about Moses' covenant. And, and covenant is like a promise, but much, much more. You know, when God make it, makes a covenant, it stays forever. Um, and that in our world, it's quite hard to understand because almost any promise you get, there's always exclusion zones. It isn't here. And, and so in, in 29, he, he, he talks back through all the time God has been with them. And that's great for us to remember our testimony and all the times that God is with us. If you like, before we get to key, key parts of our lives, remember where the Lord has taken you. And, and then becomes part, a very challenging part, and it's one I want us to, 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 if you like, not skip over. That actually, God is a God that blesses, but he's also a God that curses. You know, and, 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 and you can sort of skip over this because it's so not popular. Um, but, but if you like, he gets the children of Israel, and, and he's basically saying them, do you want God's blessing when you go into the into the land or do you want to be cursed now again one of the things that repeats itself again and again and again in the Old Testament is choices and, and why we've got the Old Testament is so that we can see the repercussion of the choices and, and if you like and when we go right away and we'll go back to Jesus it, it's not still the soft option there, there is talks of the narrow and the broad way that leads to destruction. And so in Scripture, here we go. These are, these are the choices. So if they remember the Lord, and if they do not get proud, then these things will be blessings. Now notice that. If you remember the Lord and do not get proud. Um, and, and so in our lives, it's, if we can keep remembering all that we have, all the gifts that we have, the relations we have, that is from God that we don't get proud. If we start to say, you know what, you know, I'm, I'm a sort of good guy, I'm a good girl, you know, I sort of deserve to have good friends, and, you know, I've done some good stuff, then the pattern can go the other way. And, and so, so here, when we, we read this, this God is an angry God, because he knows the damage that sin does. And he knows the ways we take, but he also knows the choices that we make. And, and we, we need to know that behind the background, but for what the Lord Jesus did for us, God hates sin. And, and if you like, we can skip over that bit. We can skip over that because we're Christians and, and we don't need that. But the Old Testament is there to say us, yeah, there are repercussions for what we do. Yeah, one of the big laws that goes across the whole of the scripture is that spiritually you reap what you sow. So, so if during these times, um, you know, these are good times of your life, then, then sow times with Jesus, sow worship times, sow into that. If, if these are good times relationally and you've got, you've got friends, sow kindness into those situations. Now is the time to do those things. Because you don't know what the future will, will hold. But if you sow those today, then you will remember the Lord and you won't grow proud. So thank you so much for joining us again and we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.